in bed with a broken hip at Lawton, Oklahoma. This picturesque old fellow, a centenarian, claims to be the legendary Jesse James. On that bucket is said to be engraved a compact between members of the James gang. It was dug up from its hiding place at the old man's direction, as were other trinkets. And this ancient 44 six shooter, testing his trigger finger before going to the hospital, Mr. James, as he wants to be known, has convinced many in the Southwest that he really is the notorious outlaw of post-Civil War days. So the question is, did the so-called dirty little coward of the old song shoot the wrong man? If you watched my earlier videos, then you would have seen an excerpt from a video that I've been working on for the better part of a year about Jesse James's lost treasure. It's been a very laborious process researching Jesse James's lost treasure and also Tarbone Mountain, the site in which the first set of his treasures were found, is blocked on all sides by this giant like gridiron fence. One side that it's blocked off on is the holy city of the Wichita's. And over there is a something called Lake Rush, and then has what looks like an old entrance, uh, like what it might have been some sort of carriage road that it, that's blocked off again by this giant like gridiron fence. There's also a dude in a white jeep who uh, kind of patrols the area, and so when we kind of when we got there, we decided to not try to get over the fence and try to attempt to go at it a different way. But uh, that's a different story for a different video. What I'm here to talk about today is somebody named J. Frank Dalton, and he was somebody who claimed to be Jesse James. There's only one problem with that. When he claimed to be Jesse James, it was the 1940s. Well, I guess there's a second problem, too, because Jesse James had been killed in 1882. So there was no real way for J. Frank Dalton to be Jesse James. Also, J. Frank Dalton may just be an alias that he picked up, uh, claiming to be a separate Western famous figure, and that by the name of Frank Marshal Frank Dalton, and he was a U.S. Marshal that was from Fort Smith, Arkansas, that operated in the Oklahoma Territory and the Indian Territory until he met his demise from the Smith Dixon Gang in November of 1887. Following the death of Jesse James hoaxer William John James in 1947, Orvis Lee Hawk, who claimed to be the grandson of J. Frank Dalton and, and later renamed himself Jesse Lee James III, engineered Dalton's adoption of a new identity as Old West outlaw Jesse James. Signing himself as J. Frank Dalton, the old man, on April 24, 1948, executed an affidavit rec recounting the details of the historical Jesse James's birth and claimed to be the famous outlaw. The affidavit was published with additional historical information about, the James, about James and the claim in the newspaper The Lawton Constitution. The following month, on May 22, 1948, Dalton made two public appearances in Lawton's business district, giving speeches at each location. Dalton posed as Jesse James in front of the crowds and spoke about what was like, life was like in the days of the Old West. This fed into the not infrequent claims that Jesse James had faked his death in 1882 and then adopted an alias, and Dalton's account incorporated many aspects told by prior Jesse James imposter William John James. James expert Homer Croy went to Lawton and found Dalton unable to answer many questions that the authentic James should have known, but Hawk continued to promote Dalton as Jesse James. On hearing of this claim, Rudy Terrelli the manager of Miramic, Miramic Caverns in Missouri, arranged to bring Dalton to the site and launched a major promotional campaign. It was there that in June 1949, Dalton was interviewed by jo journalist Robert C. Rourke, who then published a three-article account of this interview. Dalton, claiming to be 102 years old, told Rourke that the man shot and killed in 1882 and identified as Jesse James was actually a similar-looking house guest of James named Charlie Bigelow. Dalton related that after Bigelow's murder, he fled to Kansas City, Memphis, New Orleans, and Florida, then to Brazil, and later to Mexico. He claimed to have eventually returned to Oklahoma, where he was elected to the territorial legislation uh, under the name J. Frank Dalton, before relocating to Texas. Dalton's account of himself as Jesse James did not hold up under questioning from James's, James's surviving relatives. A day the debate between supporter Rourke and critic Croy was broadcasted nationally by CBS. 
On September 5th, 1949, Terrelli, along with the cavern owner Lester B. Dill, hosted what was claimed to be the 102nd birthday party for Dalton as Jesse James. Also inviting James Russell Davis of Nashville, who claimed to be Cole Younger, a 110-year-old Oklahoma man who claimed to have been known both outlaws, was invited and a and made a positive identification. The next day, Dalton was posed for a photograph with another Old West pretender, Brushy Bill Roberts, who claimed to be Billy the Kid and the two would offer mutual support for each other's claims. J. Frank Dalton died on August 5, 1951 in Granbury, Texas, and a post-mortem examination was said to have found several of the distinguishing body marks slash features that real, the real Jesse James was rumored to have, including numerous bullet wounds, a rope burn around his neck, a damaged fingertip, and several burns on his feet. This claim differs from earlier reports that showed Dalton's finger injury was to the wrong finger and that he had no evident chest wounds, which Hawk explained by claiming skin grafts had been performed. Dalton's death certificate was recorded with the name of the man he had claimed to be, Jesse Woods and James. The name also appeared on a gravestone erected at his burial site in Granbury, in Granbury Texas at the Granbury Cemetery in 1983. In 1966, Terrelli offered a $10,000 reward for anyone who could prove that Dalton was not James. After the daughter-in-law and grandchildren of the real Jesse James presented their evidence, it ended in a court case in which they were ruled to have satisfied the burden of proof, and Terrelli was ordered to pay the reward. The decision was upheld on an appeal, but Terrelli died in 1972, never paying. In 1995, the gravesite historically attributed to Jesse James at the Mount Olivet Cemetery in Kearney, Missouri was exhumed. The remains were examined and found to be consistent with James's historical record. And with mitochondrial DNA analysis performed on the remains, uh, they were found to match two matrional relatives of the historical outlaw, leaving no scientific basis for doubting that it was indeed outlaw Jesse James, whose remain had been transferred to Mount Olivet in 1902 from the gravesite on the James family farm where he had been buried in 1882. This conformed with an earlier handwriting analysis performed in, 18, in 1986, which concluded that examples of Dalton's handwriting did not match that found in the 1880 letter written by Jesse James. Beginning in 1996, amateur historian Bud Hardcastle, with the support of three sons of the James descendant Jesse Cole James, began a push to exhume the Granbury, Texas grave belonging to Dalton to allow for DNA testings of their remains. The three James's brothers believe that J. Frank Dalton was their grandfather and that he was also the real Jesse James. An initial petition to the Hood County, Texas court was declined that year, but a subsequent request was approved in 2000. During the exhumation, which occurred on May 30th, 2000, the investigation team found two coffins at the gravesite, a large steel vault in a wooden casket, and since the exhumation order was restricted to one coffin, the, cl the closest to the tombstone, the steel vault was removed for study. However, when the contents of the steel vault were examined, they proved to be the remains of a one-armed Granby resident named William Henry Holland, leaving the question of Dalton's genetics identity unanswered. Where does this leave us? I really don't know. Surely, this man couldn't have been Jesse James and Marshall Frank Dalton. Maybe the jurors of the court case that decided the $10,000 settlement said it best when they said Dalton was probably derelict all his life, and in his waning years, he wanted to get a little publicity. It strongly seems that that's all it was, and maybe all it will ever be.